I titled this message, Take a Breath. Our journey always leads us uphill. Some people have uphill dreams, but downhill habits. As a disciple, our journey takes time. So many people are in a hurry. The question is today and always will be, who do I want to please, God or people? You know, I, I'm going to say it this way. There's, a, there's a probably a lot of people who, they, they, they want to love God. They do, but they just, they're just so ignorant of the scriptures. They don't even understand what they're saying. You know, if anybody just reads the Bible, when, 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 when rulers got out of line or they became ungodly or they went against God, God would always send, and I'm not a prophet, but God would send a prophet to them and rebuke them and tell them, get in line or this is what God's going to do. Today in our America, we, we want the church silenced. So when some preacher in New Mexico, because that's where we live, stands up and starts rebuking this leader, I don't know why anybody's surprised. Because who else is going to rebuke her? Not the people around her. I mean, we sat in a hearing for the $10,000 fine that I'm not going to pay a penny of. And, um, and, and I'm watching as two people paid by the state. I mean, like, how, 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 this process is all messed up, paid by this governor. The hearing officer allowed some things in that I thought was egregious, like, are you serious? And then I thought, ah, he's paid by the governor. And my attorney called me down because I was being given testimony. I, I got a little mad. Not mad, just, just indignant. And my attorney was like, calm down, calm down. And, and, and folks, listen. Our faith should mean something to us. The truth is at times, you cannot do both. You can't please God and people. You just can't do it all the time. And no one can or gets to skip the process that God has for each and every one of us. God is not in a hurry like we are. God's word never says, hurry up, get it done. Grow, hurry up. And I was talking to one of our guys that puts all this out so you guys can follow along on your stuff and and he was telling me that he's involved with certain things, and, and we have places. We, we, we support Expect a Miracle. We, we, we support Steelbridge. And, um, and he was just talking to me, or write, sent me a text and said, you know, it's, I guess now that you, I've read the message, it's, I'm getting so aware how people want to hurry. So if you're in one of these places trying to get your life cleaned up, quit being in a hurry. I just want this, 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 and this. Well, maybe that's not the healthiest thing for you right now. No matter where you're at in life, no matter what you're doing, quit getting in a hurry. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be 18. All I wanted to be was be 18. When I was 14, I wanted to be 18. When I was 13, I wanted to be 18. I just wanted to be 18, and here's why. Because I wanted to be old enough to leave the house. And not that my parents were bad. They're, they were wonderful to me. It's that I just didn't want anybody to tell me what to do anymore. That's my whole attitude. I'm going to college. You won't be able to tell me anything. I'm going to do what I want, when I want, how I want. And that was my attitude. But you know, with having that attitude, I miss so much. And I, I, I look back and I, and I think now, because I'm a little older, and I, and I think, God, we, we need to start enjoying, it's probably a strong word, the process of growth. Because we, we all are going to go through it. God does not let you skip second grade to get to third grade. He's not an American. And he's not a person. Because we always want to make God man. And God's trying to make us more like him. And you don't get to skip the process. No one gets to. 
We all go through things so he can grow us, mature us, work with us. It's called the process of growth. Proverbs 19.2 says, a person without knowledge is no good. A person in a hurry makes mistakes. Proverbs 19.2 says also, it is not good for a person to be without knowledge from the Amplified. And he who hurries with his feet acting impulsively and proceeding without caution or analyzing the consequences sins and misses the mark. So many people are in a hurry. I just want to grow. I just want to be this. I want to be that. And, and we, we, don't, we don't learn where we're, why we're in the moment. We're, we're out of the moment. We want to just be in the future somewhere instead of being in the present. And what God do you want me to learn right now? People often move too fast through life, rushing headlong into the unknown. Some people marry without really getting to know the other person or overlooking or excusing behavior because all I want to do is be married. Others do things without considering the consequences. Enthusiasm is no good without knowledge, is basically what the Bible says. Acting impulsively, and it will not make a bad situation better. So we need to slow down, take a breath. Be sure you understand what you're getting into and where you want to go before you take even the first step. We cannot tell or know all that the future holds, but we must do our homework. We need to ask questions, but we need to know what the questions are we need to ask. We need to be sure that we are following God. How can you be sure? By going to his word and find out what it says. Jeremiah 2.25, slow down, take a deep breath. What is the hurry? Why wear yourself out? Just what are you after anyway? That's from the message, but the other translations will talk about worshiping idols. Why are you going after idols? Folks, each one of us as a believer has a road to walk. God knows exactly what you need. And he knows where he's got to take you so you can get it. And a lot of times it's not fun or easy, but if we just keep trusting God, it'll always be worth it. But so many people want to skip the process. I did, but God wouldn't let me. Well, did you willingly submit to it? No. He just said that you can be here as long as you need to be here, but you're going to be here. That's why some of us are like that guinea pig. <laughs> Running around that same old little wheel. And our life always ends up somewhere very similar. It's because we want to avoid the process of growth. We all do. And when you look at Jesus' life, he seemed to never be in a hurry. Mark chapter 5, if you would. If you have a real Bible, you can turn into it. If it's on your phone, that's fine. I like a Bible. I like to look at it, read it, write in it some. Verse 21. Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, my little daughter's dying. He said, please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. And Jesus went with him. And all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power 
had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask, Who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. So here's the picture. Jairus comes to Jesus and said, You've got to come with me right now. You got to be in a hurry, but get to come. You got to lay hand. My daughter's dying. You got to lay your hands on her so she'll be healed. So Jesus said, "Okay, here we go." Starts walking with him, but a crowd was all around him. So imagine twenty people, fifty people, hundred people, two hundred people. Who knows? All around Jesus, he's trying to walk through them because they like Jesus. So he's trying to walk through them. And can you imagine everybody? And with all the touching going on, one lady comes up because of her faith and touches the hem of his robe. And the healing power of God goes out of him. He said, who touched me? And his disciples are like, what? How can you ask who touched me? All these people are touching you. Now, Jesus wasn't in a hurry. I bet it didn't bless Jairus, though. Because he's like, let's go. And Jesus is like, wait a minute. Who touched me? So they said he's looking around. Finally, this lady, knowing the law, knew that she had violated the law. She was unclean, and she wasn't supposed to touch someone because now they become unclean. That's why she fell at his feet. And she said, here's what I did. I touched your robe. And she's, she's basically confessing and Jesus, being Jesus, said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Because she's healed. Now, only one person in that whole crowd touched Jesus with any faith. Let me say it this way. For everybody here and watching, there's so many people who crowd around and touch Jesus and say, Oh, isn't he so cute? Oh, I, I love Jesus. But there's very few who actually touch him with faith and say, not only do I love you, I trust you, and I'll follow you wherever you lead me. That's the difference. I don't know how many people over the years, oh, I love Jesus, I love God, but why aren't you doing what he asked? Well, you know, I got other things. That's what they tell me, busy. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't think I'm going to serve in a church. I mean, my gosh, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody. Yeah, until you die. Then you can realize all your status in this world means nothing to God. In fact, he's going to look at you and say, look what I gave you. What would you do with it for the kingdom? And a lot of people are going to be like, but, but I, I love you. And he's going to say, but you never touched me with any kind of faith, of trust and belief. Out of that whole crowd, one person. One. And then he went on and laid hands on Jairus' daughter, and she was healed. But I want you to hear this. He wasn't in a hurry. See, we think our emergencies cause God to be in a hurry. People are saying all the time, I want a miracle, I want a miracle, I want a miracle. Here's the problem with wanting a miracle. In the Bible, when you look at miracles, it's because people were distressed and in dire situations. And then they got a miracle. I don't know about you. I don't want to live miracle to miracle. I don't want to be in bad, dire situations. I want to live from glory to glory. I want to, I want to live a consistent life where maybe I need a healing, maybe I need some strength or something, but I don't need a miracle all the time. We need to live consistently with Christ touching the hem of his garment with a spirit of faith that says, I actually believe. Well, how do, you, how do you know if you actually believe? Are you doing what his word teaches? Well, you can say, I don't know his word. Okay. Are you doing what you do know? I don't know any. Great. So your starting point would be asking Jesus to be Lord of your life. 
Because that, that's what you need to start. And then, then you get to know the Word. But how many people know the Bible? They claim to, and they refuse to do it. They get caught up with all of what the world says. People for 20 years have said, I won't go to that church, that pastor's too political. And here's what they meant. If I talked about abortion, that's political. If I talked about homosexuality, that's political. I'm like, but that's biblical. But oh no, but it's political. If I talk about having a biblical worldview, then you're political. You know what they're saying? I, I want to be around Jesus, but I don't want any faith for Jesus. I have no faith for him. I don't trust him. And so they, they, they go after the messenger, and, and they forget that I learned it from there. And that's the way your friends and family probably with you. We get calls today and yesterday, people going to other churches, calling and asking us for religious exemption. And here's what I know of two said so far, and I haven't heard. There was like, I think we got like 75 calls today. And here's what they said. I didn't realize I was going to a church that wouldn't take a stand. So a lady called us going to Sagebrush, and, she, and they said, we're not going to give you any religious exemption later. We're not, we're not going to do anything. So they call us because guess what? This old crazy church over here <laughs> that, that they didn't want to be a part of <laughs> is willing to stand up. Someone called from Calvary yesterday and said, please, I'm, I'm, I'm in dire straits. I'm going to lose my job. Or well, call your church. They called their church. Their church said, we're not taking a stand, which is a lie. And I'm just telling you the truth, which is a lie, because the pastor, Skip, got on social media a while back and said, everybody needs to take the vaccine. It's the greatest thing in the world. They did take a stand. So they're just not being honest. But now this crazy church over here that people call, you, you've had your friends say it. I was getting my blood drawn and was told. I mean, the lady didn't even know who I was, but she hated me. Oh, that pastor over there. And I said, have you been? Yeah. And I'm looking at her like, I'm the guy. <laughs> now, I didn't tell her I was the guy because she was going to draw my blood. And I don't want to be stuck 50 times like, oops, sorry, oops, sorry, oops, sorry. So I, I, but I was thinking, this is how people think. Let, let, me, let me say it again like this. We need to slow down, take a breath, and understand this, that we're all called to go through a process. And we have been fighting for so long here. Now at least we know what we're fighting against. It's very clear. And so we want to take care of the people that make this happen all the time. So if people want to come, they got to come, they got to get involved, start giving, and then we'll help them with the letter. Because we don't know what they believe. Obviously, the, the places they're going don't believe much. And you say, oh, I know, I'm going to get it. Pastor, you shouldn't talk like that. Why? 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 They're calling us. You should know. You should know who, who's in the city. People say, if all the churches just get together, we could change. You know why we're never all going to get together? Because we all don't agree what this means. We just can't do it. But I did get called from two other pastors today, said, what are you guys going to do? One guy just met on the phone today. What are you going to do? He's at Calvary Church in Berlin. What are you going to do, pastor? I said, here's what we're going to do. He said, well, we're with you. We're going to do the same thing. So, so there is some fire. It was refreshing. Now he's going to be my friend. I said, if we go to jail, you go first. I'll, 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 I'll check you out. You go. You go. He doesn't know that yet, but he, he's going first. I really had a long talk with him. It was a great talk. There's a process, and God's never in a hurry. He just wants us to touch him with trust and faith and belief and just do what we know to do. Luke, and then I'll close, guys, because it's I'm not going to get very far. Luke 10, 38 through 42. 
As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing, and she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair? There's a the, there's the word, guys. Unfair. We, need, we just need to almost get that out of our vocabulary. Doesn't it seem unfair to you, so that's a leading question, that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. I love Jesus' response. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. God is sitting with them. And all she's worried about is all the things she has to do. And she doesn't even understand that God is there, that she needs to sit at the feet of Jesus and let him minister to her. So she goes to him like so many people do. It's unfair. I know. Life is unfair. We got it. And can, you know, they should be doing this and they should be doing that. And sometimes we have to take a breath and really just seek and follow the Lord. He's leading. The question isn't, is he, is he leading or not? The question should be, am I following his lead? Are we following after him? Jesus, again, wasn't in a hurry. He told Martha, you're worried about so many details. You got so many concerns. If we are going to walk with Jesus, we must slow down and understand no amount of hurry will help you grow or know God better. In fact, hurry hurts our relationship with God. Psalms 46, 10a, the beginning of it says, be still and know that I am God. Your life's pace matters. And God is not a hurry like we are. No matter what reason or what season we are in, we need to ask ourselves. No matter what you're facing, you need to ask yourselves, what do I need to learn while I'm in this season? What do I need to get? What do I need to see? Because God is always teaching and instructing us always. So we have to ask those questions. No matter what you're facing today, what you're going through, we need to ask questions. Why, why am I here? What do I need to learn? What do I need to get out of this? What, what does God want me to see? Because all those things are important. My wife and I spent seven years and four months as the pastors of Church on the Move in, in Roswell. Brother Hames, one of the guys that hired us who was on our board of directors here until he went home to be with the Lord, he used to say this to us all the time. Pasty, Pasty. I'd say, yes, sir. He said, this ain't your home. I said, okay. He said, this is a training ground. This is not your home. Just know that. This is not your home. And when we got the call to come up here, I called him. I said, Brother Hames, you're not going to believe it. He said, what? And I said, I got a call from what was then Victory Love Fellowship by the pastor to come take over the church. He got quiet and said, I told you. It wasn't your home. God was preparing you, preparing Cynthia and I. Because only God knew what would happen in 2020, 2021, August of 2021. He knew what it would take to be able to stand against the craziness of the devil. And so the whole process that I didn't like most of it, my wife is a champ, she just goes through it, has prepared us for this day. So I want, to hear, I want you to know this. Your preparation has prepared you for this day if you want to take hold of the robe of Jesus and say, this is also my day. This is my time. This is our fight. I won't die on every hill, but I'll die on the hill of religious freedoms. Because I know, I know 
I have to wonder. I know. Without religious freedoms, we have no freedoms at all. And so you and I will have church this Sunday. For everybody watching from the governor's office. And we will, we will worship our God the way we always do. Period. We're not going to change. We're not going to do anything different. So get your friends and your family and tell them, if you really want to go to a church that's making a difference and taking a stand, come to Legacy. It's a great place to be. But more importantly, take note of where you are in life, take a breath, don't be in such a hurry, and ask God, whatever you're dealing with, what do I need to learn? What do you want me to see? What do I need to get out of this season? I don't like it. It's not fun. He didn't, you know, he never said, hey, just to have fun in all the seasons of your life. I mean, it's amazing what God hasn't said. But we grow, and we grow from glory to glory. That means we go from one stage to another stage. Let me just help somebody here on, on this real quick. You know, how many of you have experienced times when your Christianity, when it seems like everything's good, you're just happy? It's like, man, there's some strength in you, joy. You're just like, man, I'm on top of the world. How many have how many experienced that? And how many have experienced when you've experienced that, you, you like wake up the next morning and it's like you feel like you sinned. Come on. Yeah. Can I tell you what that is called? It's called growth. So here's how God moves. Because I, I went through this. I used to think, God, what did I do? I just went to bed. I didn't even do anything. I, just, I woke up and I just felt different. It was like, it was weighty. It was like, this is no what I, and I always felt like I sinned. And I would repent for everything. I said, God, I don't know what I need to repent for. I'm a repent for I don't know. And I, it bugged me. And then one day I learned, I said, oh, so here's what happened. We go from glory to glory at a good pace, not in a hurry. And when you get to the top of one level, you're flowing. It, you're chilling. You're like, life is awesome. This is good. You may even have problems, but it's still good. You feel good. You're happy. You're like, man, I got to pop in my step or whatever in your step, whatever it's called. A what? A pep in my step. <laughs> See, I, I'm the kind of preacher that needs help. So thank you for helping a brother out. You got pep in your step, and then you go to sleep, you wake up, and it, it's like something came crashing down. Do not get discouraged. So here's what happened. You just got promoted to a higher level, but you're at the bottom of that level. So now you got to work your way up. So then you'll experience it again, and then after a while, you'll know, so you won't experience it. You, you, you'll still be good, and when you wake up, it's like, uh, and you'll be like, I know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for growth. Thank you for helping me, because, man, I'm growing. I just went, I'm at the bottom of another level, and you start having a better attitude about it. But those feelings are real, but they're not facts. The truth is we grow, and we have to learn how we grow. And through the midst of some terrible struggles, we grow. But I think what's cool is God's never in a hurry. He's never like, come on, let's go, Steve. Let's go. You got to grow. Come on. It's just like my kids. But now my grandkids, I don't look at them like, come on, get taller. Come on. I need you to grow five inches right now. We don't do that with our kids. They just, if they're healthy, they grow naturally. And when you're healthy spiritually, you just grow supernaturally, I guess got to stay with God. we got to touch Jesus in a way that's full of faith and belief that I believe. God, I know if I just hang on to you, I'm going to be okay. And we shouldn't fight amongst ourselves over outside things. People have fought us over this year over COVID. I'm like, that's an external thing. You're dangerous. You're a super spreader. You know what came out in the, the, the thing the other day? Daniel did a good job, too. He was, had to testify. And what came out was we hadn't had any outbreaks like they said we would. And you know what? Their doctor couldn't explain it. He said, if we had people get COVID, sure, but they don't know where they got it. 
But we haven't had like, you know, 80 people come in and say, hey, I'm, I'm all sick. I'm just telling you guys, we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Stay close to him, and we're going to be okay. Because here's what we know. No matter what happens, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We're going to win this. We're going to win it one way or the other. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. I thank you for teaching us. I thank you for helping us. I thank you, God, for the enthusiasm in this room, understanding the seasons and the times we're in. Our whole church family has grown this year. Bless each each campus, God. Bless all the people who attend them. Help us to see what you see and to stand for what you stand for. Help us discern the lies from the truth and the truth from the lies. Help us, God. Help us to not be in such a hurry to grow that we know it just takes time and and not get down on ourselves when we're not where we think we should be. It just takes time. Teach us your ways, O God, that we might know you. Help us to learn and grow and develop. God, you're a God of more than enough. You win. You can have our hearts and our minds and our bodies. And Father, if we don't stand now, we will lose everything. And I believe you called. Always, you always have a remnant that will stand. And there's other bodies of believers in this state and this city in our surrounding area that are going to fight with us. We're not fighting alone. Thank God for them. Bless those churches. Bless those pastors. Keep them strong, God. We're not against churches. We're just against when people are against you. We're for our brothers and sisters. Open up the eyes of the, these other pastors that I mentioned and open their eyes that they can see you and do the right thing for the people that call those churches their home. My heart breaks for these people, God. We have thousands here to take care of first. Help us to do that. This weekend, I thank you for divine protection. I thank you that the Bible says, behold, their threatenings. So we behold them. But God, you still raise up a standard for us that no weapon formed against us will prosper. There's been weapons raised up, but they'll not prosper against the church, against believers. Keep us strong, God. Give people wisdom as they navigate their work thing. Help them, help them to, to go get, if they want to, the religious exemptions. But God, here, this is a home where people are welcome. And whatever people decide between you and their families is, is, is okay. But everybody gets to decide for themselves, not anybody forcing or telling. So God, lead us and guide us. Help bless people here. There's some crazy stuff happening out there. In Jesus' name. If you're here with every head bowed or you're online with every head bowed and you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I walk with God, but I've walked away. I want to come home. I, I, I really do. I need to get this thing right. We know the time is short, guys. There's no better moment than right now to give your life to the Lord or get back right with Him. Or maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I've never really given God my heart. I came because I've heard what you speak out. Or I've just, I know people that come here and they're just great people. I was invited. Or I just know I need God. You can find Him here right now. The Bible says if we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. There's only one way to the Father. That's through Jesus Christ. Only one way. And if you want that way, you can receive it right now. With every head bowed, listen, if you're online, the same thing. If you you say, Pastor, would you include me in your prayer? I'm going to ask you to do something that's so simple but so profound in 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 the same way. It's simple because it's not hard. It's profound because of 
the significance behind it. That if I confess Jesus before men, he'll confess me before my Father. And what I'm going to ask you to do, it's, it's you're saying, God, I don't care what anybody else thinks, that's what's in my life. If that's you, right where you see it in here or wherever you're at online, and you say, include me in your prayer. I need to come home. I need to give God my life. I don't even understand all that means, but I, I want God in my life. This is how you get him. I'm going to introduce you to somebody named Jesus. He's the only Savior of the world. No church can save you. No family member, no friend, no spouse. It's personal with God. And he wants a personal relationship with you. You say, why would he want that? Because he created you. And he, and he does care. The Bible says he loves. So he did something about it. He sent Jesus. If that's you in Jesus' name without any hesitation, are you ready? And you say, Pastor, include me in your prayer. Right where you're seated, right now, in Jesus' name, all over this place, would you just lift up your hand? It's not hard. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you over here. Thank you, God bless you, God bless you here. Sir, thank you. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you. And look across the top. Who else would join us? Thank you, God bless you. Anybody else as I go across the top? Thank you, God bless you. I see you waving. God bless you, God bless you. Who else? God bless you, ma'am. God loves people. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm going to look across the top one more time. Anybody else up there say, okay. We're going to pray together, guys. God bless you. Thank you. We're not going to single you out. God bless you. Thank you. Over here. Anybody else? I'm going to look across the bottom section one more time. And if you're online, I hope you lifted your hand too if you need to get right. God sees that. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for all these folks. So many of them just lifted their hand. So powerful, God. They can say they just want you in their life. So I pray you bless them. I pray you help them. I pray you encourage them like they've never been encouraged before, that they'll leave here like a weight for someone just lifted off them. A dark cloud just moves away by the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, for helping people. We're all broken in some way. And you like to take, you're the potter, we're the clay. You take all these pieces and put them back together. We become somehow stronger and better for it. In Jesus' name. If you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this prayer aloud with me, right where you're seated. And if you're online, right where you're at, I want you to pray it out loud. The Bible says we believe in our heart and confess in our mouth. And I want everybody to pray. If you lifted your hand, you pray, but everybody else, would you join us? Would you pray with me? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe He's your Son. And I believe He is Lord of all. Now, according to your word, believe that in my heart. And now I willingly confess with my mouth, Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Help me to live in the moment and understand the process. Teach me your ways, O oh God, that I might know you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. Let's thank God.